An ongoing neighborhood dispute in Montgomery County turns deadly. Tonight, a local barber is in jail. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Sheba Russell. The alleged gunman is now facing murder charges, accused of killing the man who lives above his shop. Our Greg Payne starts us off tonight. It was very shocking. Yeah, it really took me off guard. Police say just before 6 p.m. Saturday, they responded to a shooting that occurred in the parking lot near Razor Reese's Salon and Spa and right next to Jay McCollum's piercing shop. I heard what I thought were firecrackers. You know, of course, now I know those were gunshots. So I went to look out the window and I just saw somebody going from standing up to falling down um, backwards. Police say when they arrived, they found 37-year-old Steven Strasburg of Hatboro suffering from multiple gunshot wounds in the parking lot and still on scene the suspected shooter 41 year old Maurice Bird of Horsham the owner of Razor Reese's salon and spa I saw Maurice over there and uh, he said that he was on the phone with uh, with the police and so I just didn't really know what to do at the time all I saw was somebody who was bleeding really badly you know I'm in a piercing shop so I have things like gauze around the shop and so I just ran back in as quickly as I could grabbed a bunch of gauze uh, went out and just held it on the wound um, on his face um, until the paramedics came Strasburg was taken to a local hospital hospital where he died. Authorities later learned Strasburg lived above Razor Reese's salon and spa and had an ongoing dispute with the owner. According to the criminal complaint, Bird says he was outside the shop smoking a cigarette in the parking lot when he was confronted by Strasburg, who began saying racial slurs toward him. Bird went back into his shop to get his phone and called 911, where he told dispatch he was being verbally assaulted by Strasburg. Bird told detectives right before the shooting, Strasburg grabbed his shirt. While still on the phone, dispatchers heard five gunshots, a pause, and then two more gunshots. Seven casings were recovered at the scene, along with a semi-automatic handgun registered to Bird, who has a valid permit to carry. Bird is currently being held at the Montgomery County Correctional Facility, facing first-degree murder charges, and is awaiting an arraignment. As for those living and working in the usually quiet area, many are still a little shaken up. Totally unexpected. I mean, nothing like that ever happens around here. Reporting in Hatboro, I'm Greg Payne, Fox 29 News. Event in Camden County disrupted, according to police in South Jersey. They say six people were arrested at a summer kickoff event in Pensacon. Large and unruly crowds started to form, causing organizers to shut the event down early. Here's our Kelly Rule. Police said in a statement, this type of unruly behavior is not acceptable and will not be tolerated in Pensacon Township, but they have not confirmed if they believe this involved the same groups as Gloucester Township last weekend. We spoke with several people today that say they've attended this event for years and this never happened. And everything was relaxed vibe until all of a sudden it wasn't. Red's Rolling Restaurant leaves the soccer complex on Bethel Avenue Saturday after a successful day that had a frustrating ending for owner and proud Pensacon local Megan Hilbert. It's scary. Honestly, like I make my living at events, you know, like that's what we do. And for this stuff to go on, like not only will it affect community pride and togetherness, but also the small businesses. Pensacon Township police say multiple large crowds started to form outside of the community members that were trying to enjoy the event, and they started to become unruly. Other departments responded to help clear out the crowds. Police say they arrested four adults between 18 and 20 years old and two juveniles. And we were stopped by the EMT people saying that you guys can't come in. There's a big commotion going on. 200 kids, give or take, were fighting each other. It was, it was ridiculous. But it's a shame. It's every single year it's a phenomenal show and for some bunch of nonsense teenagers to ruin it. The Wawa on 130 also reportedly closed temporarily due to the crowds clearing the park. It comes one week after Gloucester Township police say they made arrests after a group of hundreds of young people wreaked havoc at the end of Gloucester Township Day, violently fighting and refusing to listen or leave. Hilbert says she was warned about those crowds coming to summer kickoff. I completely swept it under the rug because I attend Pensacola events all the time with the food trucks as a personal, you know, community member and it's no nothing ever happens like that. This does not represent Pensacola and who we are. Normally it goes really well every year. I don't think they'll stop doing it at all. Uh, like, I mean, I don't think they should stop doing it. Police say all four adults were charged with disorderly conduct and failure to disperse. Three of them from here in Pensacola Township, one from the city of Camden. Police say one person was also charged with resisting arrest. Reporting in Pensacola Township, I'm Kelly Rule, Fox 29 News.
Developing tonight in Kensington, a man is shot dead and police tell our Steve Keeley six people on dirt bikes and a moped drove off from the scene after firing 41 shots. Investigators say the whole thing was caught on several surveillance cameras. This just happened before 8 p.m. and Sky Fox over the scene there at Potter and Huntington Streets. According to police, a 54-year-old man was shot multiple times. Medics took him to the Temple Hospital where he died. Police tell us the shooters took off in multiple directions. And this all comes as Philadelphia leaders are moving forward on phase two of their plan to clean up Kensington. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Jason Martinez. And I'm Sheba Russell. Police are calling it the enforcement phase. It is a plan that should bring more police to Kensington. Our Steve Keeley has the details. The promises and plans from City Hall months ago are being put into practice in Kensington, police leaders announced today. More cops, more enforcement, and less of what Kensington has long become known for, the place where drugs flow and crimes follow. We are going to go down there and start to address what has been manifesting from the issues down there, the level of open-air drugs, the violence that occurs there, and all the things that have kept that community pretty much uh, imprisoned for a long time. And the we will be Philadelphia's newest police officers. Their first assignment going right from the academy to Kensington. And we will be moving 75 men and women from the Philadelphia Police Academy who will graduate next week, will move into the Kensington pocket where we will start to address those drug corners and that drug activity that is causing much of the violence that we see here. The commissioner's four years as chief of Philadelphia Public School Safety showed him how tough kids have it in the 14 schools within the Kensington section, especially the elementary and middle schools close to each other in distance and disturbing statistic. Conwell Middle School and Willard, which are across the street from each other, are number one and number three in the nation with having the highest level of shoot shootings around their schools within 500 feet. I've watched what has happened to our children down there. So caught up in their own our kids cannot play in that area down there. Our kids cannot walk to school down there. And so the plan is to change both perception and reality, that open sales and use of drugs is no longer okay, and the quality of life crimes in Kensington no longer tolerated and accepted, and make Kensington safe to go to school, safe to work, and safe to live. In Center City, Steve Keeley, Fox 29 News. Breaking news, eight people suspected of ties to the terrorist group ISIS have been arrested. Thank you for joining us here. Busy five o'clock, I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Sheba Russell. It is part of a federal sting carried out in several cities, including here in Philadelphia. We want to get right out to our Chris O'Connell. Chris, what have you learned? Uh, good evening, Sheba and Jason. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security confirming for us tonight the arrest of those nine suspected terrorists in a sting operation that happened in recent days across the country. Fox News is reporting one of those suspected terrorists was arrested right here in Philadelphia. In a joint statement by the FBI and Department of Homeland Security confirming that ICE agents arrested several non-citizens pursuant to immigration authorities. The actions were carried out in close coordination with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Forces. Fox News saying eight nationals from Tajikistan were arrested in Los Angeles, in New York, and here in Philadelphia. It's being reported that one of those suspected terrorists came in through the southern border, although it is not yet clear their specific goal or if Philadelphia was a target. Now, the arrests come as the Department of Homeland Security put out their most recent assessment, putting out a high threat level for small groups groups or lone individuals for these kinds of small group attacks or coordinated lone attacks. Uh, no details of where the arrest happened here in Philadelphia, but guys, obviously this is a developing story. We will have much more on this coming up tonight on the Fox 29 News at 6 and at 10 o'clock. I know you're staying on top of it. Chris O'Connell, thank you very much. Police in Bucks County are searching for the thief or thieves who stole a prominent pride flag during Pride Month. The crime captured on exclusive video you'll only see on Fox. Take a look at the hateful act as it unfolded in the dark here, recorded by one of our Fox 29 weather cameras looking over downtown Doylestown. 
This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Sheba Russell. And I'm Jason Martinez. The flag was put up by the borough to celebrate the LGBTQ community. Our Seanette Wilson live in Doylestown with the latest. Seanette. Well, Jason and Sheba, as you mentioned, we use those Fox 29 weather cameras to tap in um, through many times during the year. My favorite is when it's winter and we can get those beautiful snow shots. But this time, what our camera captured was an act of hate. The pride flag is back up at the intersection of North Main and East Court Street in Doylestown, flying proudly beneath the American flag. But this one is a replacement for what happened to the one originally there. I think it's immature. I think it's wrong. Patrick Cleary is talking about video actually captured by our Fox 29 weather camera here in town. Watch closely. It shows the American and pride flags both drop to the ground. Police say someone cut the rope on the Civil War Memorial flagpole and removed the pride flag from the clips and took off with it. They left the American flag there on the ground. Especially near the courthouse. That's uh, pretty wild, actually. Cleary lives and works about a block away at Villa Pizza, not happy that this happened in his town. I mean, I love how open we are to everybody from all walks of life in this town. And when people step on, you know, other people's journeys and attempt to uh, express themselves and feel welcome. It's, it's it's depressing, really. Police say it happened around 1.50 Thursday morning. They say the camera also captured a person on a motorcycle with flashlights around the monument at the time the pride flag was stolen. That's a lot of effort to go through to take down a pride flag. James Lamb, co-owner of Evolution Candy, recalls the same thing happening outside his store. This is video from when that incident happened last year. Why can't people just leave well enough alone if it doesn't pertain to you? Marlene Prey was out this evening taking pictures of the new flag. She's on the Doylestown Pride Festival Committee, which is responsible for having the flags up around town during Pride Month. She has a message for whoever is responsible. The LGBTQ community is part of the community. We are here. We are visible. We're also never going to diminish our voice and our power. And call the Central Bucks Regional Police Department if you have any information. And Jason and Sheba, the community, of course, um, is saying that they are very grateful for the mayor and borough officials for getting a replacement flag up as soon as they did. Right away. Yeah. All right. There's a few, a few clues there in that video, and hopefully people see something familiar and can help police out yeah. with this one. All right, Seanette, thank you. A pop-up party in Fairmount Park turned deadly last night as a mass shooting erupts, leaving a teenage girl dead. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Jennifer Lee. Four other teenagers were injured, and Philadelphia police are asking for your help to find the shooter. Our Ellen Koloje has the very latest. It all started here at 33rd and Ridge Avenue just hours after the Philadelphia School District let out for summer break. Police say a big group of kids started partying out here, and that's when the trouble began. <laughs> When you see a pack of people like that, you know something gonna happen. And then I seen them all fighting, like it was a riot. They just all started fighting each other right here on this corner. Janiah Worthy took this video of fighting that started Friday night in the Strawberry Mansion section of the city and said she was terrified for her and her five-year-old son. And then after that, the little boy ran down. Then he ran back. They jumped him and his little sister. His little sister had to be like seven. I was like, are y'all serious? And I really wanted to interfere, but it's just me, myself, 30 kids out here jumping this one little boy. I was like, wow. That garners our attention because we want to uh, both protect the community and protect uh, these kids from themselves. Police say they knew there would be trouble with more than 100 kids in that area, so they were ready. While police were even on location, they heard gunshots and immediately communicated to fellow officers that they heard gunshots coming from Fairmount Park. That's when officers say they found two people shot in the park and took them to Temple University Hospital. A 17-year-old young woman shot in the chest was pronounced dead at the hospital, and an 18-year-old woman shot in the leg was in stable condition. Two 15-year-old boys, both shot in the leg, arrived at the hospital by car and are in stable condition. A fifth victim, a 14-year-old boy, was shot in the stomach and is in stable condition. It's real bad here. And just the fact that I have a five-year-old, I was think like I was thinking about that when the little boy was running down the street. I'm like, what if that was my son? I would have went to prison. I was almost scared myself because you know nowadays these teenagers is wild and they don't care who you is. They want to beat you up, take your stuff. 
Neighbors say they want change and want officials to get more of the guns off the street. So they don't get in kids' hands and kids are getting killed, then, I mean, it's senseless. It's senseless, it's sad. So neighbors in the surrounding area say they are worried that more of these pop-up parties will continue now that school's out, and they anticipate even more of this kind of violence. In Strawberry Mansion, Ellen Kaloje, Fox 29 News. Dirt bike enforcement ending in gunfire today in North Philadelphia. Around 3 p.m., officers confronted a dirt bike rider at a lot on 6 and Somerset. Police say the suspect then pulled a gun on the officers, who then in turn reportedly discharged their weapons, shooting the suspect twice. A firearm was recovered at the scene. It's not uncommon for us to recover guns when we are doing dirt bike enforcement, and this is a prime example of the dangers they pose to the city. Police say that dirt bike rider is currently in critical condition.